हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू दी कोर्स ऑन मैकेनिक्स ऑफ मशीनिंग टुडे इज द फिफ्टीन लेक्चर इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल डिस्कस डिटेल्स अबाउट प्रैक्टिकल मशीनिंग ऑपरेशन स्टिल नाउ मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम वी टाक इन फेयरली जनरल वे वी हैव नॉट गॉन टू स्पेसिफिक प्रोसेसेस नाउ आई विल सी दैट हाउ दोज कंसेप्ट कैन बी अप्लाइड टू स्पेसिफिक प्रोसेस लाइक टर्निंग प्लेनिंग एंड शेपिंग टर्निंग एज यू नो इज परफॉर्म इन ए लेथ मशीन इट इज यूज टू प्रोड्यूस एक्सी सीमेट्रिक कंपोनेंट दैट मीन्स योर कंपोनेंट कैन बी इन दी फार्म ऑफ सिलेंडर आई कैन मशीन ए सिलेंडर आर आई कैन मशीन ए कोन एंड प्लेनिंग इज यूजली फॉर मशीनिंग ऑफ द रेक्टेंगुलर जॉब्स इन दिस केस इन प्लेनिंग आई कैन प्रोड्यूस मोस्टली दैट प्लेन सर्फेसेज शेपिंग इज ऑल्सो सिमिलर टू प्लेनिंग डिफरेंस बिटवीन प्लेनिंग एंड शेपिंग इज दैट इन द प्लेनिंग एक्चुअली दी जॉब इज रिसीव प्रोकेटिंग एंड टूल इज स्टेशनरी एट वन पॉइंट एंड इन दी शेपिंग टूल रिसीव प्रोकेट्स एंड जॉब इज स्टेशनरी एट वन पॉइंट दैट इज द डिफरेंस बट टर्निंग प्लेनिंग एंड शेपिंग आर ऑफ देम आर परफॉर्म बाई ए सिंगल कटिंग पॉइंट टूल हियर सिंगल कटिंग पॉइंट टूल एज यू नो दैट इट विल बी हैविंग दैट वन टू टू कटिंग एजेज दैट साइड कटिंग एज एंड कटिंग एज कनेक्टेड बाई ए नोज रेडियस बट यूजली दी ऑपरेशन इज डन बाई ओनली साइड कटिंग एज एंड कटिंग एज फा बेसिकली पार्टिसिपेट्स इन ए स्मॉल वे सम पोर्सन ऑफ एंड कटिंग ऑल्सो पार्टिसिपेट्स इन दी कटिंग बट मेन कटिंग इज यूजली बाई दी साइड कटिंग एज दैट इज वाई इट इज ए सिंगल पॉइंट कटिंग प्रोसेस सो मोस्ट प्रैक्टिकल मशीनिंग ऑपरेशन यूज टूल्स हैविंग टू आर मोर कटिंग एज एज बट ए क्लोज एग्जामिनेशन ऑफ दीज ऑपरेशन वी रिवील मार्क सिमिलर टीज विथ आर्थोगोनल एंड ऑब्लिक कटिंग सो वॉट यूर आर्थोगोनल ऑब्लिक कटिंग वी हैव स्टडीड दोज कैन बी अप्लाइड इन आर्डर टू गेट फेयरली एक्यूरेट इस्टिमेट मकेनिज्म इन्वॉल्व इन सम ऑफ द प्रैक्टिकल मशीनिंग ऑपरेशन आर क्वाइट कंप्लेक्स एंड इन मेनी मशीनिंग ओनली इम्पीरियल रिलेशनशिप है बीन डेवलप्ड द इन्फ्लुएंस ऑफ प्रोसेस वेबल्स ऑन चिप जोमेट्री कटिंग फोर्सेज एंड सर्फेस फिनिश विल आल्सो बी कंसिडर्ड वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट सर्फेस फिनिश आल्सो व्हिच टिल नाउ वी हैव नॉट डिस्कस्ड नाउ लेट अस कम टू द प्रोसेस ऑफ टर्निंग वेयर वी कैन प्रोड्यूस ए सिलिंडिकल आर कोनिकल सर्फेस ओके दैट मीन्स दिस इज सपोज इट इज आई एम माउंटिंग ए जॉब बिटवीन टू सेंटर्स ओके इट इज माउंटेड हियर दिस इज चक साइड दिस मे बी टेल इज टक साइड एंड माई टूल इज कटिंग लाइक दिस ओके जॉब इज रोटेटिंग फिच इज प्रोवाइडिंग द मेन कटिंग मोशन एंड फीट मोशन इज प्रोवाइडेड बाई द टूल टूल इज मूविंग लाइक दैट वी गिव सम डेफ ऑफ कट हियर so in a straight turning operation the tool is made to travel parallel to the axis of rotation of the work piece this is the axis of the rotation and tool is moving parallel to it and it is straight turning cutting speed of the tangential cutting velocity in this case is this one v is equal to pi dw into n cutting speed or it is basically tangential cutting velocity is defined like this pi dw into n that is basically peripheral velocity in meter per minute so v is equal to pi dw into n and the feed velocity v is v is equal to f into n because f is the feed actually instead of feed rate i must say that f is the feed in millimeter per revolution usually they express in millimeter per revolution and if n is the rpm then product of this will give you millimeter per minute that means that will be feed velocity so feed velocity may be expressed in millimeter per minute provided this feed is in millimeter per revolution and n is basically rpm revolution per minute okay so now dw is the work piece diameter suppose in the beginning you have diameter dw okay n is the rpm and f is the feed 
दैट इज मिली मीटर पर रिवोल्यूशन वी जनरली डोंट से फीड रेट सम पीपुल से फीड रेट इफ इट इज इन मिली मीटर पर सेकेंड बट वी जस्ट से फीड दैट मीन्स इट इज मिली मीटर पर रिवोल्यूशन इन वन रिवोल्यूशन ऑफ द वर्क हाउ मच द टूल विल विल एडवांस है ना जनरली इट मे बी अबाउट पॉइंट वन मिली मीटर पर रिवोल्यूशन ऑल्सो सिंस वी इज कैपिटल वी इज मच ग्रेटर दैन वी दैट मीन्स कटिंग विल लास्टी इज मच ग्रेटर दैन फीड विल लास्टी वी इग्नोर द इफेक्ट ऑफ द फीड विल लास्टी वाइल कंसिडरिंग द रिजल्टेंट रिलेटिव विल लास्टी बिटवीन द टूल एंड द वर्क पीस दैट इफेक्ट इज निग्लेक्टेड एंड द डेप्थ ऑफ कट डी इज मच स्मॉलर दैन डी डब्ल्यू सो डेप्थ ऑफ कट इज देयर बट सपोज आई एम हैविंग दिस डेप्थ ऑफ कट दैट इज मच स्मॉल कंपेयर टू दिस थिंग स्मॉल डेप्थ ऑफ कट वी गिव सो वी कैन एज्यूम दैट कटिंग स्पीड इज कांस्टेंट थ्रू आउट द डेप्थ ऑफ कट दैट मीन्स कटिंग स्पीड वी आर टेलिंग पाई डी डब्ल्यू इन टू एन मोर प्रोसाइजली एट द सर्फेस द स्पीड विल बी पाई डी डब्ल्यू बाई एन बट एट इन साइट पोर्सन वी आई दिस विल बी पाई डी डब्ल्यू माइनस टू डी बिकॉज द डायमीटर हैज रिड्यूस्ड बाई टू डी अमाउंट इन टू एन सो इंटरनल दैट सर्फेस दिस पोर्सन विल एक्सपीरियंस दैट मच विल लास्टी बट दिस टू डी इज स्मॉल कंपेयर टू डी डब्ल्यू दैट्स वाई वी आर वेस्ट से रफली दैट दी कटिंग विल लास्ट इज लाइक दैट बट नाउ वट इज इफ यू आर मेकिंग वेरी स्मॉल कंपोनेंट्स एक्सेट्रा एंड डी इज ए स्मॉल डी इज सिग्निफिकेंट इन कंपेरिजन टू डी देन यू हैव टू टेक केयर अबाउट दिस आस्पेक्ट सो लेट अस सी दैट हाउ द टर्निंग प्रोसेस गो जान दिस इज डी डब्ल्यू इट इज रोटेटिंग एट ए आर पी एम ऑफ एन वर्क पीस इज रोटेटिंग टूल इज मूविंग वी आर गिविंग द फीड इन वन रिवोल्यूशन द टूल विल गो फ्रॉम हियर दिस एज इज हियर दिस विल गो हियर सो दैट मीन्स दिस मूवमेंट इज एफ एंड वी हैव गाट दिस कटिंग एज दैट इज साइड कटिंग एज विच इज कार्ड प्रिंसिपल कटिंग एज बिकॉज इट इज मेनली डूइंग द मेन कटिंग एंड द सेकेंड वन इज जस्ट आगजरी कटिंग एज इट आल्सो पार्टिसिपेट्स लिटिल बिट इट मे हैव some influence on the finishing but this is auxiliary cutting edge and this is also shown here that bc is the auxiliary cutting edge this is tool important point is this that uh, what is the chip thickness here most of the students will confuse about that uncut chip thickness it is not that depth of cut d is the chip thickness in instead what we have studied in the orthogonal machining they are used to be one chip thickness that means uncut chip thickness that means this was the portion and then here it was like this like this it was like this because and this is the surface so suppose tool was like this it, this was a tool okay so what was there that this tool is moving like this and uh, this was called uncut chip thickness that was uncut chip thickness right so tool is because tool is digging and it is removing okay and it is removing this much material so you may think that it is it is depth of cut here but actually it is not so because the cutting edge is actually this side cutting edge here and it is digging like this it is digging from the side and in one revolution it is moving by a distance f so that means that this one this distance should be this is the from in one revolution this portion has gone from here to here okay this much it movement has taken place so in a way the tool has taken this much depth in the orthogonal way that means this should be uncut chip thickness is shown here so with i take a cross section perpendicular to the cutting edge principal cutting edge then we get this type of picture so actually here t is the chip thickness that means cutting is basically the side way it is not uh, in the depth way in the depth direction like this portion will provide you the width of the chip and this is the rake angle rake angle alpha is this one because you are cutting like this this is the surface of the tool and this is the normal to that machine surface 
so you got here as far so and uh, you will be showing this thing here t so next uh, so in turning the material remover mainly takes place along principal cutting edge a b but some material remover also occurs along the auxiliary cutting edge b c and this operation is often called restricted orthogonal cutting so undeformed chip thickness t and the undeformed chip width b in a straight turning operation is defined as t is equal to f cos gamma s where gamma s is the side cutting edge angle if if the tool is like this is straight then side cutting angle is zero and t becomes f so that means uncut chip thickness is anyway equal to f in that case otherwise also it is f times cos gamma s so that means if i double the feet then my uncut chip thickness will double depth will not have any influence depth is having about the width of the chip so b is equal to d divided by cos gamma s if you see carefully the previous diagram then you can make out width is in this direction so that is why width is this but it is d by cos gamma s because this surface is inclined at gamma s so that is why uh, this formula you should always remember that t is equal to f cos gamma s and b is equal to d by cos gamma s and where gamma s is equal to 90 minus gamma p that is side cutting edge angle in a SA system you can say gamma s and otherwise gamma p is the principal cutting edge angle of ors mrs and in rs system orthogonal rake system maximum rake system and normal rake system and i is the inclination angle that we said the rake angle alpha for equating this process to orthogonal cutting should be alpha n in an rs system and inclination angle i should be equal to zero when i is equal to zero then alpha n is naturally equal to alpha zero of rs system so this you already know now let us see about the forces most conventional turning operations approximate oblique cutting and require three components to specify the forces these three components are what fp is the cutting force in the direction of cutting velocity so it is job is moving like this so direction of cutting is like this vertical one so that is called fp that is the main force fq is the feet force in the direction of feet motion that will come on the tool like this hmm, because this is the force which is coming on the tool by the job so fp is downward fq is this one fr is also directed towards this everything is applied on the tool that is why we have shown if we ask what is the direction of a fall on the job it will be just opposite by newton's third law so you have got fq fq fp and fr naturally if we have these three forces the force system gives the resultant force r as r is equal to under wood fp square plus fq square plus fr square okay so that's what we have obtained and then if we three dimensional force system can be reduced to a two dimensional force system if the forces are considered in the orthogonal plane that is in a plane perpendicular to the principal cutting edge with fq prime acting in the direction perpendicular to the principal cutting edge in the horizontal plane so suppose it is some case of orthogonal cutting a resultant of fq and fr we have taken fq prime and this we consider as the first force remember the angle between fq prime and fp is 90 degree because fp is fully vertical and we are assuming that it is orthogonal type of cutting in which fq and fr both are horizontal plane so their resultant will be fq prime and this will be like that so here uh, this can be shown like this r is equal to fp square plus fq prime square okay. and fq prime in turn is under root f r square plus fq square this is possible when i is equal to 0 degree in inclination angle may be 0 degree and principal cutting edge angle may be anything between 0 to 90 degree usually that 
it may be 90 degree or something like that generally zero degree principal cutting edge is fairly uncommon and f q prime is contained in the orthogonal plane. So, f q prime, prime is contained in the orthogonal plane that you have already seen here f q prime is here. Okay. Now, what happens when i is equal to 0 degree and gamma p is equal to 90 degree or gamma s is equal to 0 degree. Na? Then the thrust force f r is equal to 0 because now the cutting is taking place mainly here. So, it is cutting feed is there, but there is no depth of cut component here and uh, the two directional dimensional force system gives this much. Okay. We assume that it is pure orthogonal type of cutting case like we are machining a tube type of thing. So, it is machining and that side there is no resistance. So, F r is naturally 0. Otherwise, when i is equal to 0 degree and gamma p is 0 or gamma s is 90 degree, then the feed force component is 0 and then also you get this expression. So, force measurements carried out during turning of a variety of work material with tools of various geometry and materials indicate that the forces are power functions of feed and depth of cut. This has been found experimentally. So, we can say F p is equal to A p into feed times some exponent d times this one f q is equal to also another coefficient f times some exponent d times some exponent and f r is also some coefficient f times something and d times uh, uh, to the power exponent something. A x and y with subscripts referring to the force components are constants for a given tool work combination and may be also the environment whether there is a coolant or not cool, coolant is not there. It may depend on even machine also. So, they can be evaluated experimentally that we can do. Okay. Now, power required in turning P w is equal to F p into V because main cutting force main, main power is that other force components are small. So, F p into V and V is the mean cutting speed. Other force means heat component, heat force may be very small that will give some heat power. Radial component is basically passive type of force because there is no movement in the radial direction. So, that is also there. So, I am talking right now only about the main cutting power F p is the vertical cutting force multiplied by V is the mean cutting speed specific cutting energy U s is defined as the energy required to remove a unit volume of material. So, U s is equal to P w by Z m. P w is the power and Z m is the material removal rate that is the product of the mean cutting speed and the chip cross sectional area. So, Z m can be written as V into A c that is pi d w uh, pi d n w and cutting area is always f into d because otherwise also if you consider a c means chip area. So, I said that on cut chip thickness was what f cos gamma cos this one was there cos psi if I use and another is d cos psi that is width. So, cos psi cos psi anyway can, gets cancelled and you ultimately get f d. So, z m is equal to this much d is the mean workpiece diameter. If I put the value of p w and z m in this expression for u s. So, that is f p into v and divided by pi d and w that is approximate that is v only and f d. So, ultimately you get f p by f t that is called a specific cutting energy. So, its unit is Newton and this is f if you take in meter or something. So, this is basically Newton per meter square unit is like that. Now, let us discuss about the surface finish. Surface finish in machining operations depends on the type of chip formation, then it depends on the tool profile and geometry and also it depends on the cutting conditions means whether there is a coolant or not coolant. A continuous chip without built up edge represents a steady 
cutting conditions and hence gives best surface finish. If the built up edge is there, then you know built up edge is basically welding of some chips on the surface of the tool and then that material which got adhered or welded that will break off and this time. So, this behavior will be erratic sometimes that some material will stick to the uh, tool then that material will separate out and it will give another that effective angles will differ. So, it will be a non steady state type of process. So, built up edge formation leads to vibration and high adverse effect on the surface finish because something is getting stuck to the tool then it is breaking in between this type of operation naturally will cause vibration because suddenly some more load will be there then less load will be there. So, this will be affecting the surface finish. Discontinuous chip formation causes fluctuation in force again because when I am cutting sometimes when lot of cutting is done there is a force then material has separated suddenly there is unloading. So, it is that type of thing that you are putting some load then removing that load then again putting. So, it causes fluctuation in force and leads to the formation of ridges on the machine surface, but continuous chip is considered best. Now, let us see that how the surface finish may be specified in terms of peak to valley height. How do you define the surface finish? Because surface is uneven like sine wave, if some there may be some peaks, there may be some valleys. So, how we can specify the surface, we can say peak to valley height, suppose this height, peak to valley height is it is the root to crest value of surface roughness. Okay. And we consider when we measure by any measuring instrument, we measure it up to some sample length. So, suppose I have taken this sample length ls in that there is a surface peak to valley distance is h. It, it is expressed usually in micrometer and uh, another is center line average. It is found by averaging the height of the surface and below a center line over the sample length L s. Suppose sample length is L s, I have the data of this one peak and uh, valley, I can easily find out the centroid. So, I can draw a center line. So, suppose this is the center line, above this center line this is y 1, this is y 2, this is y n. So, all these things I add in absolute sense that means, positive and negative do not consider otherwise everything will should come out to be 0 because on this side above the central line it is positive, below the central line it is negative. So, we take the absolute value. So, that is central line average H C L A. this is called i is equal to 1 to n if I take the measurement at n points. So, we add them and then divide by n. Otherwise, if you can know the equation that how y is changing with x, you can integrate between 0 to L s uh, uh, absolute magnitude of y integrate between 0 to L s d x and divide by the your sample length L s you get h c l a that is central line average and this is also written as R a value in this one that is also written as R a value. Okay. Now, root mean square R m s it is the square root of the mean of the squares of the ordinates of the surface from the central line. So, that is written as H R m s or it is also written as R q many times they write R q. In fact, this also peak to value height is written as R z many times R z that is peak to early height. So, root mean square is the square root of the mean of the squares of the or net of the surface from the central line h r m s is equal to y 1 square plus y 2 square plus y n square divided by n and take the square root of whole thing or if it is a continuous variation you can say h r m s is equal to you integrate 0 to l s y square d x and divide it by the sample length l s take the square root and you get this type of things. So, you have got uh, these things y 1, y 2 and y n and uh, it has gone and uh, this this can be written. So, naturally you can see 
that Rz will be the largest among all these three measures Rz is the largest ok that means it is from here to here ok. If we sometimes we assume a triangular type of profile like this like this like this like this. So, you can say that as far as the Rz is concerned suppose I say this is Rz ok. Then R a may be a only R z by 4. Why? Because this is the mid point and from here to peak height is R z. So, average height is basically R z by uh, R z by 2 by 2 because this is R z by 2 from here and this is the thing. So, this is rough relation between R a and R z that R a is equal to assuming that the profile is triangular R a is equal to R z by 4 ok. Suppose R z is 10 micrometer, then uh, mean height is at 5 micrometer level and from there highest peak is at 2 uh, at 2 uh, uh, suppose this is 10, this is 10 let me just say suppose suppose this was 10. So, this would have been 5 from here to here right that is peak but we are considering in R a that means in central line average we are considering what is the average height that is 2.5 uh, this one. So, R a is equal to R z by 4 and R q also you can see. Now, in surface finish in turning suppose you use a tool which is very sharp there is no nose radius. So, it will keep moving in one feed it goes from here to here and you get feed marks like this that means from here to here feed is like this. So, you get feed marks and because of that you get some peak to value height your peak to value height will be here. On the other hand if the tool is having a nose radius then in that case it will go here and here. So, feed marks so it will generate this type of profile. So, feed is like this. So, this is feed and this is peak to value height. So, that means it will be like this. So, feed mark is this tool is gamma E this angle and this angle is gamma S. Gamma S is the side cutting edge angle in American system and gamma is, is the end cutting edge angle. Another case can be this that when the nose is not fully engaged some portion is cutting here in that case you get this type of picture. Based on that you can find out ideal expression for roughness of the machine surface. So, suppose the tool is very sharp then the peak to value height h that is this one f is equal to h tan gamma s plus h cot gamma e h means it is basically peak to value height h that is peak to that is r z. So, this one so we can very well see here that this is the feed if I say from here to here this is the feed ok. So, from here to here this distance is f right and this height is h you have seen this h. So, naturally that this is if it is a uh, this side it is gamma s. So, this is a uh, this angle may be gamma s right this is gamma s and this one is a uh, so this will become gamma s here. So, this will become h h into tan gamma s. So, tan gamma s because gamma s is like this like this here. So, gamma s tan gamma s is actually tan gamma s suppose gamma s is this that is basically this distance x 1 x 1 divided by h. So, x 1 is equal to h times tan gamma s. Similarly, you can say this one also here this is gamma e. So, which one is gamma e that means this angle is gamma e ok. So, we say cot gamma e cot gamma e is equal to this divided by cot gamma e is equal to x 2 divided by divided by h. So, therefore, x 2 is equal to 
uh, uh, h cot gamma i i at x 1 and x 2 you get this type of things. So, f is equal to h tan gamma s plus h cot gamma e that means, if side cutting edge angle is more uh, ok now. So, h becomes like this f divided by tan gamma s plus cot gamma e which indicates what that if the feed is more your peak to value height will be more. So, that means, it is directly proportional to uh, that uh, feed and if your gamma s is more that side cutting edge angle is more then it will be more flat type of thing and your h will be reduced. But if cut gamma is if gamma is, is more then in that case this will be increased ok. So, gamma e can be this type of thing that means, if it is like this type of situation that it is more like this and gamma e can be like this that means, ideally if I can have like this then it will be doing evening out of the things that means, gamma e 0 in this case this is a tool in which gamma e is 0 suppose it is cutting like that. So, these are the expressions and for a tool of finite node radius r the peak to value roughness can be evaluated as this is feed f and peak to value height is h. Then these are the feed marks here, this is the tool here, this is gamma s and this one is gamma e here, but the it is only cutting at the nodes. So, if we make the expression like that then r square minus r minus h square is equal to f square by 4 that type of expression will be there. This you can make the feed is f. So, this will be f by 2 f by 2 in that case cutting is this one. Let me just make for your understanding suppose this is the feed this one I am showing in the reverse way I am showing I am showing in the reverse way and this is like this this is f and so what I am doing that suppose this is r and this height is say h h. Okay, so, this becomes r this is r minus h by Pythagoras theorem r square minus r minus h square will be f by 2 whole square. So, that is f square by 4. So, it becomes r square minus r. So, this becomes 2 r h 2 r h minus h square, but h is very small. So, neglect it. So, 2 r h is, is equal to f square by 4 and therefore, h is equal to f square by 8 r, where r is the nose radius. Is it not because this is the nose radius that circular one nose radius and this is f is the feed. So, this expression is valid when the tool cutting is entirely on the nose radius r only. When this is not so, then the peak to early roughness can be shown to be h is equal to f tan gamma e plus r by 2 tan square gamma e minus under root 2 f r tan q gamma e. This derivation will take some time based on the trigonometry only, but this is the expression presented here. From above equation, nose radius, cutting edge angle and feed rate have influence on the surface finish that is the expression is given. Now, what is the effect of feed rate and cutting speed on surface finish? No? What is the effect of the cutting speed that is also? See, just a while ago, we discussed about the cutting forces and you see that in the expression I have written that the cutting forces are dependent on the feed and depth of cut because they mainly influence, but the speed also has some effect. If speed increases, generally the forces decrease because there is no built up edge form, formation, uh, it is somewhat fast, friction is also less. So, some difference is there may be 10 percent, 20 percent, but that I am not taking into account. No? Similarly, if you see these ideal expressions, there the depth of cut is not coming into picture, only the feed is coming into picture and cutting speed is there, but actually they also will have some effect. Experimentally, we have seen 
बेटर सरफेस फिनिश इज रियलाइज ओनली एट हायर कटिंग स्पीड्स बिकॉज दैट टाइम बिल्ट अप एज विल नॉट फार्म फेयर कंटिन्यूअस चिप विथाउट बिल्ट अप एज इज फार्म एट लोअर कटिंग स्पीड डिसकंटिन्यूअस चिप एंड बिल्ट अप एज फार्मेशन रिजल्ट इन पुअर सर्फेस फिनिश सो सर्फेस रफनेस विथ फीड एक्चुअली इट इज इंक्रीजिंग लाइक दैट बेटर टू से फीड एक्चुअली नॉट फीड रेट फीड इन मिली मीटर पर यूवल्यूशन बेटर टू से दैट देन सर्फेस रफनेस इज कमिंग लाइक दैट इन द कटिंग स्पीड इनिशियली एज द कटिंग स्पीड इंक्रीजेज बिल्ट अप एज फार्मेशन स्टार्ट बिकॉज मोर टेम्परेचर में बी जनरेटेड देअर गोर सर्फेस रफनेस इंक्रीजेज बट आफ्टर ए सर्टेन पॉइंट देन दी विथ कटिंग स्पीड द सर्फेस रफनेस इज डिक्रीजिंग बट एज आई हो इंडिकेटेड दैट हियर द सर्फेस रफनेस इज इंक्रीजिंग विथ फीड बट इट मे नॉट बी प्रैक्टिकली सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल वन एम टेक स्टूडेंट इन टू थाउजेंड टू ही डिड सब वर्क दिस वॉच पब्लिश्ड ऑल्सो सो ही हैज डन वॉट ही कंडक्टेड एक्सपेरिमेंट्स ऑफ टर्निंग विथ टी आई एन कोटेड कार्बाइड टूल ऑफ द स्टील मटीरियल एंड वी आर सींग दिस टाइप ऑफ रिजल्ट दीज स्टार्स आर एक्सी रिलेशन ऑफ रेडियल वाइब्रेशन ही मेजर द वाइब्रेशन ऑल्सो एंड ही आल्सो मेजर द एवरेज सर्फेस रफनेस दैट इज आर ए वैल्यू इट इज सीन दैट विथ फीड इन फैक्ट अप टू अबाउट पॉइंट वन फाइव मिलीमीटर पर रिवॉल्यूशन विथ फीड द सर्फेस रफनेस इज डिक्रीजिंग हियर द सर्फेस रफनेस इज अबाउट थ्री माइक्रोमीटर बट हियर इट इज ओनली वन एंड आफ्टर दैट इट स्टार्ट इंक्रीजिंग आई एज वी प्रिडिक्टेड थियोलॉजिटिकली दैट मीन्स आफ्टर दैट दिस वन है ना सो दिस मे बी रीजन मे बी वाई दैट वाई विथ इंक्रीजिंग फीड सर्फेस रफनेस इज डिक्रीजिंग इन इंटरेस्टिंगली द वाइब्रेशन हैव इंक्रीज हियर सो यू कैन आट से दैट इट इज ड्यू टू वाइब्रेशन आर समथिंग देर हैज टू बी डिफरेंट रीजन सो डिफरेंट रीजन कैन बी दिस दैट इफ द फीड इज वेरी स्मॉल then there is no proper cutting action no shearing action there is just indentation type of thing and adjacent areas get plastically deformed that type of phenomena is this one and plastic deformation occurs and that is why that you get this type of thing as you have seen that if there is a blunt tool and you dig it then it will deform the adjacent surface so this is generally also called this effect is spine jp fill jp fill effect okay that means i am cutting it like this there is no proper cutting action but i put a small feed there is a plowing type of thing here and there is a some indentation so adjacent area is getting drastically deformed okay so that may be one reason if you see that he did at 175 meter per minute at that speed at that time also little bit reduction was there but you know that it is not prominent that means here you can see in a very prominent manner that with feed increasing the surface roughness is decreasing whereas in this case with feed decreasing that is uh, feed increasing little bit decrease is there after that nearly it is constant with feed and uh, overall magnitude is also somewhat less only we got 175 and if we go to 238 m meter per minute now in this case this one here is as 238 uh, this is 1.5 or 2 and here okay scale difference is there that's why you are it is appearing that is more but actually it is lesser in this case it is something like one here it goes up to 1 micrometer and this is what so this is you are getting this type of behavior at 238 meter per minute so what i mean to say that practically there may be lot of this type of phenomena now going uh, coming to this one other process like shaping and planing in the shaping and planing the cutting action and geometry of the cutting in shaping and planing is similar to turning but tool angles feed and speed are not necessarily the same 
in shaping the cutting speed is provided to the tool and the feed is given to the work piece while in planing the feed is given to the tool and the work piece is provided the uh, cutting speed. In both the cases cutting takes place during the forward stroke and the return speed is made high to reduce the overall machining time. Right turning the cutting is along the principal cutting edge while some material removal also takes place in long auxiliary cutting edge BC, we assume this also be a case of orthogonal cutting for the purpose of application of the orthogonal cutting theory. So, we are cutting like this, this is a uh, shaping tool, it is feed is given to the work piece and the job is like this. So, suppose the tool was here and then the tool has come here, okay. these are the two positions of the tool, this and this. Okay, so, in that case like in turning no, that this one and this one, this is chip thickness will be like this. So, this is T and this will be angle is shown here. So, it is like this T is equal to F cos gamma s and B is equal to D cos gamma s where gamma s is the side cutting edge angle. So, it is basically in the similar way. Rake angle alpha bar equating to orthogonal cutting should be alpha n, which is equal to alpha 0, when i is equal to 0. Forces are like that resultant force R can be resolved in three components here also. One is Fp along the cutting speed direction, then force in the direction of feed motion and force in the direction perpendicular to the surface. So, R is equal to Fp square plus Fq square plus Fr square. Now, a plane perpendicular to the principal cutting edge FQ and FR can be combined to give FQ prime in the direction perpendicular to the principal cutting edge and R is equal to FP square plus FQ prime square and this is uh, possible only when I is equal to 0. That is uh, this one. So, far estimating the force components using orthogonal cutting theory T and B are evaluated chip thickness and width and then we surface roughness expressions are similar to turning peak to early height for shaping planing with a sharp tool is given like f tan gamma s plus cot gamma e in the same manner and this way similarly uh, if the tool is having nose radius then similar type of expressions can be obtained. Now, let us uh, discuss one or two problems here. Suppose a shaft of length 200 mm is mounted between centers, 100 mm diameter shaft is turned to 90 mm diameter in a single piece, a zoom approach is 2 mm and over travel is 3 mm, turning has tool has a side cutting edge angle of 45 degree, cutting speed is 50 millimeter per minute and feed is 0.2 mm per revolution estimate the time of machining. These are somewhat realistic data I have given. How it will be solved? Suppose the cutting is taking place in one pass. So, shaft is having 100 mm diameter and uh, it is uh, and we have to turn up to 98 mm. So, that is why 100 minus 98 divided by 2 is equal to 1 millimeter that will be depth of cut. Then the two total tool travel will be how much? That it will be 200 a total tool because 200 is the length of the shaft. So, that means tool has to certainly travel 200 from here to here. At the same time this will start touching here itself. So, this distance also you have to account for that means touching will start here and this is nothing but d tan, tan 45 because this angle is 45 degree side cutting edge. So, 200 plus d tan 45 plus 2 mm is the approach that means 2 mm before you have to start and over travel the means after cutting has occurred then also it will move 3 mm. So, that portion has to be added and it comes out to be 206. Then you calculate rpm of a spindle because cutting speed is 50 meter per minute. So, v is equal to pi d n by 1000 put that data here pi into 100 by n by 1000 and this is equal to 50. So, then n is equal to 159 rpm. 
then time of machining will be L divided by F n and this will be 200, this is 0.2 into 159, this is nothing but the feed velocity, F n is feed velocity. So, length divided by feed velocity will be this thing and it comes out to be 6.3 minute. Okay. So, that is what. Now, uh, go to problem 2. A straight turning tool has a back rake angle alpha b of 10 degree and side cutting edge angle of 40 degree. For orthogonal cutting condition, what is the value of side rake angle? Suppose we have done this. So, for this you know that for orthogonal cutting condition i is equal to 0. Now, you have to remember this formula which I taught long back that tan i is equal to sin gamma p tan alpha b minus cos gamma p tan alpha s that should be equal to 0. So, just you have to substitute the value you see alpha b is equal to 10 degree and this one if you put that then you get alpha s is equal to 11.9 degree. So, if you have this type of situation then the i will be equal to 0 that is the value of the side rake angle. Okay. Problem third during turning of a, a t m m diameter into 2 mm thick aluminum tube that means it is a aluminum tube now with a 0 this OIS system these are the tool data the following data was recorded cutting speed was 180 meter per minute feed was 0.2 millimeter per revolution cutting force is 1500 Newton thrust force was 850 Newton chip thickness is 0 0.40 millimeter evaluate the shear angle and the power required for the cut. Since i is equal to 0, therefore, alpha is equal to alpha n that is equal alpha 0 equal to 15 degree only. So, this is equal to 14 because i is equal to 0 anyway, this is i is equal to 0 and this is rake angle 15 degree. So, undeformed chip thickness will be T is equal to F cos gamma S or F sin gamma P principal cutting edge angle and this is 75 here, it is given 75 from tool signature I have seen. So, 0.2 into sin 75, this becomes 0.193 and therefore, R is equal to T by T C. So, we can say 0.193 divided by 0.4, chip thickness is 0.4 that means 0.193 was this uncut chip thickness and cut chip thickness was measured that came out to be 0.4. So, R is equal to 0.48. Therefore, shear angle is that formula R cos alpha divided by 1 minus R sin alpha. We put it here, we get phi is equal to tan inverse this much. So, it has come 27.9 degree. Then power required is table calculated as P w is equal to F p into V and 1500 is the force was measured and cutting velocity was 180, 180 meter per minute. So, this came out to be this is Newton meter per minute because this is meter per minute. So, Newton meter per minute, but you know that in one minute there are 60 seconds. So, divided by 60 and simplify that you get 4500 watt or you get 4.5 kilowatt or you get approximately 6 horsepower. Okay. You know that formula also for converting kilowatt to horsepower. So, this has been done. Then uh, during an oblique cutting test with alpha n is equal to 25 degree that means normal rake angle is 25, i is equal to 10 degree, t is equal to 0.3 mm and b is equal to 4 mm the following data was recorded. Chip thickness ratio was 0.42, force components F p was this much, F q was this much 420 and F r is equal to 180 Newton. Evaluate the normal shear angle, the shear stress and the coefficient of friction assuming stabler chip flow rule. What is stabler chip flow rule? Stabler chip flow rule says that the chip inclination angle will be equal to the inclination angle of the means chip flow direction will be equal to the inclination angle of the tool. So, that means chip flow direction will be 10 degree. 
chip will flow if the cutting edge is like this normal to the cutting edge is this chip will flow like this about 10 degree from here. Normal shear angle is calculated as tie tan phi n is equal to r t cos alpha n divided by 1 minus r n sin alpha n that means 0 0.42 is given here chip thickness ratio cos 25 degree because it is a uh, alpha n is mentioned 25 degree 1 minus 0 0.42 sin 25 degree it comes out to be 0 0.463 so phi n came out to be this and shear stress was f s by a s and expression for f s again you have to use that in three dimensional one we have used those expressions f b cos i and all those things and here a s is naturally b t divided by cos i by sin phi n in oblique cutting we know that it is related like this. So, this becomes a s in the shear plane b by b by sin phi n and this will be t by cos i. So, you get this type of expression and then if you put these expressions here then if by substituting all these things you get this one cos i is known sin phi n is also known. So, you get 204.72 Newton per mm square or 204.72 means 205 mega Pascal 1 Newton per mm square is mega Pascal coefficient of friction is calculated as f by n and expression for f on the tool is surface is given like this expression for n is this you put it that so coefficient of friction is coming 1.86 you see that effectively this is a very high coefficient of friction so that's what we have obtained so this is uh, now let us see another problem during an oblique cutting test the following data was recorded alpha n is equal to 25 degree i is equal to this much b is equal to 4 mm t equal to 0.3 mm v w is equal to 20 meter per minute and k is equal to 250 newton per mm square that is uh, this one shear stress and mu is equal to 0.6 f n is equal to 30 degree assuming is stabilizer cheap flow rule calculate the cutting power requirement. So, in this case we know tan gamma n is lambda n is equal to 0.6 that friction friction is 0.6 this is friction angle normal friction angle this will give you lambda n is equal to 31 degree eta c is equal to inclination angle because of stabilizer chip flow rule and this gives 10 degree that means chip flow direction is this. Then the cutting force is calculated as k b t divided by sin phi n and uh, because k is the shear strength b t by sin phi n like this and uh, this one is uh, multiplied by this component. So, this expression we derived and we have to put all these things then naturally you got eta c is known 10 degree i is 10 degree lambda n is 31 degree we got 744 Newton. So, cutting power is equal to then we get P w is equal to F p into V that means cutting power is 7, 7 4, 4 into 20 and that becomes 14880 Newton per minute that means 248 watt or something. So, this is uh, this one then there are some other questions like this suppose the diameter of a rod is to be reduced from 50 mm to 45 mm by turning in a single pass turning. A spindle speed is given 300 revolution per minute, feed is 0.2 mm per revolution, determine the material removal rate in millimeter cube per minute. Now, solution let the turned length is L mm, then volume removed is how much pi by 4 50 square minus 45 square because 50 mm diameter has been reduced to 45. So, volume removal is pi by 4 50 square minus 45 square into L that much has come L is the length. Time of machining is L by F n. So, it is L by 0.2 this much that means this much minute. H 
Hence, a mazar is equal to volume removed divided by time of machining. We put it there, LL gets cancelled and you get 22386 millimeter cube per minute. But if we do by approximate formula, MRR is equal to 1000 FVD and here V is equal to pi dn by 1000. So, this comes out to be this one, D is 50 and this is 300,000, it has come here. Then MRR is coming uh, 1000 into 0.2 into this much into uh, D is 2.5, that is coming 23560. So, you see that uh, there is a difference here, uh, there is a difference in this, uh, these things, there is a difference. So, percentage error is actually, percentage error is minus this much plus this, that means we are getting uh, somewhat uh, into 100 percent, that means we are getting 5.24 percent error. Okay. So, let us see the problem 7. In a shaper, the length of the stroke is 200 millimeter per minute, the number of double stroke per minute is 30 and the ratio of return time to the cutting time is 2 is to 3. That means, it is cutting in uh, uh, two uh, cutting ratio of return time, it is returning in 3 minutes, but cutting is 2 minutes something like that. So, ratio of return time to the cutting time is 2 is to 3. Okay. For cutting it is taking 3 minutes, for returning only 2 minutes fast. So, what is the average cutting speed? So, the solution is like that double stroke per minute is 30, because it is said that double stroke per minute is 30 number of double strokes in 60 second is 30, hence one double stroke takes 2 second, like that we can argue. One double stroke takes 2 second, hence the time for cutting stroke, stroke is 2 divided by 2 plus 3, because cutting uh, is this one. So, time once double stroke takes 2 second, double stroke has taken 2 second, then time for cutting stroke, cutting is return is done at a faster rate. Okay. So, that means, it is it is this one cutting stroke, it is 2, time for cutting stroke is this much, uh, 2 divided by 2 this one, 2 by 3, actually it, is, it should be 3 divided by 2 plus that means, 3 divided by because total time is suppose 5 minute, out of that 3 minute is for cutting, so 3 by 3 5, but actually it is not 2 minute, it is 2 second, so that means 1.82 second. So, 1.82 second, 1.2 second is for cutting, hence cutting speed is equal to stroke length divided by time for cutting stroke return is only in point, point 0.8 second. So, this is actually 200 divided by 1.2 and that can, can come out to be 2 uh, this one 200 divided by 1.2. Okay. So, this becomes 200 divided by 1.2. So, you can find out that how much uh, it will be millimeter per second, okay, millimeter per second. So, if we want to find out in millimeter per minute, so 200 into 60 divided by 1.2, okay. So, this can come out to be 12, 5, job, 5 and 50, so it becomes 10 and this is 1000, so it comes out to be 10 meter per minute. Right. It was earlier printed wrong, it is not 15 meter per minute, it is actually 10 meter per minute, that is how that this answer has come. So, we can may have to sometimes estimate that cutting stroke and all that thing. Then let us see one or two problems on the surface roughness. Suppose SA tool signature of a single point cutting tool is this much, this tool is used for turning of a 50 mm diameter mild steel bar 
at feed of this much 0.24 millimeter per revolution and depth of cut of 1 millimeter at a cutting speed of 50 meter per minute, what is the obtainable ideal surface roughness? So, nose radius is 0 0.8, hence peak to valley surface is given by f square by 8 r that formula. So, we put 0 0.24 square divided by 8, nose radius is 0 0.8 it is given here in tool signature. It comes out to be 9 into 10 to the power minus 3 mm that means 9 micrometer. But central line average surface roughness is approximately one fourth times this value hence R A is equal to F square by 32 R that means it is 2.25 micrometer. So, that is the answer. Okay. Then by how much percentage is the average cutting temperature expected to change by doubling the cutting velocity and reducing the principal cutting edge angle from 90 degree to 30 degree in a turning operation. Assume that a waste temperature is proportional to is a root of cutting speed and feed. So, assume that a waste cutting temperature is proportional to square root of V c and f and f 1 is equal to feed into sin phi because this is the uncut chip thickness sin phi. So, cutting temperature in both the cases are given in one case it is this much phi is 90 degree another case is basically this one 30 degree. So, dividing this one the ratio is obtained as 1. So, that means uh, uh, okay, by that means there is no change in temperature okay. that is the answer. Then calculate the surface roughness in plane turning of a rod at a feed of 0.3 mm per revolution if the tool's cutting edge angle are 60 degree and 15 degree tool nose radius r is equal to 1 mm. So, in this case angles have been given cutting angles uh, and then this is principal cutting edge angle and this is side cutting edge angle the maximum value of surface roughness just plugging in the formula R t is equal to f divided by cot phi. If it was side cutting edge, I would have written tan psi uh, something. So, this is 0 0.3 and this one. So, it comes out to be 69.61, but R a is equal to R t by 4. And if the tool nose radius, if it is cutting on the tool cutting uh, uh, nose, then it is maximum value of surface roughness is f square by 8 r. Put it there it comes out to be 11 micrometer roughly and R a is equal to R t by 4 that means 2.81 mm. Then you see that one is in an orthogonal turning by a tool having orthogonal rake angle 0 degree and complementary of side cutting edge angle phi equal to 90 degree. The magnitudes of cutting force components P z and P x were found to be 900 and 500 respectively determine the value of the appearance coefficient of friction that will occur at the tool chip tool interface under the above mentioned condition. So, in this case phi is equal to 90 degree P x is equal to P x y sin phi. Okay. So, that means that is the P x y is equal to 500 and the 0 rec for 0 rec angle the friction force is f is equal to P x y only that is 500 normal force is n is equal to 900. So, appearance coefficient of friction is f by 9 and this is the thing. Here we have used that type of thing that suppose this is p x y, p x y means this thrust component and it has got two components p x and p y. So, that type of thing has been used. In a given turning operation by how much percentage will the average cutting zone temperature increases if only the cutting velocity is doubled only the tool feed rate is uh, doubled, only the depth of cut is doubled, all those variables are doubled simultaneously, assume theta average is equal to, it is this one, v c to the power 0 0.5, f to the power 0 0.5 and t to the power 0 0.2, here t is the basically related to width of the chip. Okay. So, this is tool uh, depth of cut basically. So, average cutting temperature which is depicted by 2 to the power 0 0.5 minus 1 and this will be 41.4 percent. Similarly, you have to just plug in the value if the tool feed rate is doubled, then it will be 2 to the power 0 0.5 minus 1 that means 
percent and then 2 to the power this one and if you rethink it doubled then that effect will be here that means it will increase by that much amount okay 130 percent. So, such type of problems are there these problems you can practice essentially we have told you about that how you know simple expressions can be obtained in the turning, but practically things will be means somewhat different that is why it is not necessary that you will get very accurate solution because your machine condition may be different so many factors are there, but at least you will get some idea that how what are the magnitude of the forces. So, this much for today and we will discuss about some more uh, machining processes we have to discuss about milling also that we will discuss in the next lecture. Thank you.